welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello there, Enchantresses. Today is the day. All right, so we are going to get into a few things. I'm singing because I'm so happy. Can you tell? (laughs) So before we get into uh, today's topic, you know, I'm going to go and talk about Instagram. If we aren't connected on Instagram, what are you waiting for? Okay. I'm making really cool reels. What's not the love? <laughs> I used to think that reels were corny, but uh, they actually been a very uh, interesting creative outlet for me. I, I've been enjoying them and getting better and better at them. So uh, yeah, let's connect cosmic underscore which underscore goddess that's my main instagram and uh the podcast instagram is enchantress underscore society underscore podcast so if you have follow-up questions uh topics you would like for me to cover connect with me on instagram and uh you'll see a picture for today's uh episode (laughs) there to post there and and you can leave a comment and we'll have a conversation all right or even if you had a uh an aha moment or something just just stuck out to you leave a comment so the announcement i have to get to this announcement because i will talk about this topic and forget about the announcement the doors are open for my free live three-day masterclass, Activating Your Inner Goddess, where it is time to let your hair down and to raise your voice. Yes, I am so excited for this. So this masterclass is going to take you from overwhelm, over it, guilt. Okay, we all know that feeling to freedom, confidence, and embodying the goddess you were meant to be. This is going down from the 15th to the 17th, okay? The link is in the description of this episode to sign up. It is free. What's there to lose? You have so much to gain. All right, so I'm actually going to take you through the steps I took that led me to unlock my unapologetic, badass goddess energy to manifest the magical life I desire. So I am breaking down the very strategies that help me to debunk so many things. Some of the things that were that I'm going to cover in this uh, podcast, I'm going to go deeper into during this three-day masterclass. So if you are ready to begin the next chapter in your life or create a new life for yourself, that's a vibe that So it's a combination of a vibe I've been getting and just having so many conversations with people who have been confiding in me that they're just ready. They're ready for a change. They're ready to move to new cities. They're putting in resumes for new jobs. There are so many people out there who are ready. That is the keyword ready. All right. Ready and change. I should say two keywords. So again, it is time to say bye to being overwhelmed over pointless things. Life is going to happen and things will get overwhelming. However, it's the pointless things that take the cake. So we're going to remove that, okay? And in the process, learn how to deal with the other overwhelm that happens because of life, all right? So no more feeling guilty when you know deep down inside you're right. 
answering that nudge that there must be more to life than this. That is the very question I asked myself because I used to think that what I had going on when I first started my spiritual journey, that, you know, I have an active social life. I have a good career. I have so many things going on, but something was missing. And I felt like there must be more to this. And I'm sorry, it was just before I began my spiritual journey. And when I ended up discovering spirituality, it all clicked. And then once I went down that rabbit hole, it was no turning back. And I've been feeling fulfilled and and becoming even more fulfilled as I go along, just feeling whole and complete and sure. Even when there's times where I only know a few steps to take, it's that trust and believing in spirit and myself. And it began with answering that nudge of there must be more than this because there is. And also you will be leaving with a goddess game plan to implement after the training. So by the end of this training, you're going to have a blueprint for a goddess lifestyle that is fit for you because you activated something that's already within you. So no, you don't need to be fixed. This isn't something that is like, oh, well, you know, you need to no, it's already within you. I'm just here to help you turn the volume up on that essence, that energy within. So this is going to be the framework for you to remove what it what is not any value in your life, to give yourself the permission to show up as your true self to the world. That's a building block. Okay. The way I show up in the world now started off with me first saying yes to myself, just taking a chance and getting contacts instead of glasses. And I wanted to actually get violet eyes like Elizabeth Teller, but uh, the company didn't carry violet. So I got blue because I like blue, dark blue on top of that. Then it led to me getting my teeth fixed, which I got done just in time because if I hadn't in a few years time, my teeth would have started to crack. And I got braces when I was 30 and I paid out of pocket for that. That was scary, but worth it. Okay. That looked like me trying out different lace front uh, colors, different nail polish colors, expanding makeup, trying different clothes to wear. Okay. And now I'm able to embody what is now present Tia, but once upon a time, it was future Tia. So past Tia is extremely happy for me right now because I worked so hard to get to this point and I want to share this with you. And of course, to create a lifestyle that resonates with you. I am so passionate about this. I cannot stand when people try to force their lifestyle on other people. What works for you is not going to work for someone else. And people need to start respecting that as opposed to trying to make people feel bad, kicking them out the family and all these other crazy things just because you aren't living a cookie cutter life that they want you to live. And it's like, okay, do you want people to be unhappy so you can be happy? That doesn't make any sense. No. So making these changes in your life is exciting and scary at the same time. Trust me, I get it. <laughs> All right. But some of the, some of the very things that caused, 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 I cannot talk, caused the overwhelm were the things that used to bring us happiness. This is one of the reasons why it's so hard to let go because the people who we used to hang out with, they were fun sometimes. And because of those moments of fun, we gave people passes. Or because they're family, we gave people passes and we suppressed our emotions. So it's twofold almost. Not almost, it is. It's twofold. One end, they used to be cool and happy and then we grow. They don't like that growth. Or we grow and we notice that "Mm, they really aren't that nice of a person. So we notice these changes and now it's time to change. So 
when we look back, a lot of times we realize there were a lot of coping mechanisms in the process. So I used to be someone who used to care what people thought. Now it's a very exclusive list (laughs) of people whose constructive criticism I value. And I'm not saying that there isn't going to be another person who's constructive criticism or advice that I would value, but I got really uh, critical about whose advice I'm taking because I used to think if someone was older than me, if they spent a lot of time in one area than I did, then they must know. That's not always the case. Sometimes people are stuck in a certain decade in their own habits. And now it's time for a change. It's time for that fresh perspective. It's time for an updated perspective. And it doesn't mean that that person is always right. No one's right 100% of the time. But I used to fall into that. Oh, they, they must be right. Oh, I'm not going to say anything because, you know, they are who they are and I'm who I am. No, 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 no. I didn't want to say certain things because I wanted to keep the peace. Now I am holding motherfuckers accountable. You understand? It's either I cut the conversation short or I repeat what they said so they can hear how they sound or I don't agree. I'm not agreeing to agree anymore. No, no, I'm not doing that. My voice is too powerful for me to just agree to keep the peace. No, that person was a nice person. No, that person is lucky for X, Y, Z. Okay. I used to eat comfort foods, AKA emotionally eating. (laughs) I always look back at this because whenever I distance myself from someone, once I realize what's been going on, I drop weight, like just like that. It vanishes. I don't pick it back up. It's gone. It's so crazy how that happens because the things that we feel on an energetic level it eventually shows on a physical that's why our thoughts can create our realities we think of something and then we become or or, or we, we enter the path to pursue it and what we think we can create hence why movies get created someone thought of that and they made it a reality it comes into the physical and the reverse happens when you're trying to suppress your emotions you need something to cope is, it shows up differently in, in, in people. For me, it was emotionally eating. And I thought I was wrong for feeling over it and not wanting to engage anymore because that's, that's what happens. It's just like, well, wait a minute. Why do I feel this way? I shouldn't feel this way. No, feelings are valid. <laughs> All right. No, our feelings are valid. We have the right to be expressive and speak up. We have the right to create the life that works best for us full stop okay no more entertaining emotional vampires people in the ego trip so anyway in this master class uh day one you're going to learn how to express yourself so we will be building uh we will develop building blocks that will lead you to be expressive honor your voice establish easy to implement strategies to get you to have your point be understood. All right. And for you to show up as yourself and to deter confrontation. Okay. That's a huge thing when people uh, talk with me, I didn't want to be a confrontation. Sometimes the gloves do have to come off. A lot of times it can be avoided. And so I, I give you examples on how you can mitigate that. Day two, goddess lifestyle. We will craft the lifestyle that's been nudging at you by creating a blueprint to debunk limiting beliefs, set up magical routines to raise your vibe, and doing an overhaul of your clothes. Yes, your clothes and environment. Okay? Yes. We're going to dive into your wardrobe. (laughs) All right? And it's going to be fun. All right. And then the final day, the pleasure principle. We are going to work on validating your needs, wants, and desires sound familiar. Fuel the magical life that you want to create. Uh, You will be defining your pleasures and embodying your inner goddess to become that magnetic manifester and more. 
And I have to tell you, the more I embrace pleasure and joy, not only did some things get easier, I I just started receiving some things that I didn't even know were even there. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks for this email. I'll take that free gift. Thank you. So that's the Activating Your Inner Goddess Masterclass. It is a free three-day live masterclass. There will be Q&As. Um, there'll be some worksheets for you and it's going to be fun. Okay. So sign up and tell a friend and get them to sign up too. All right. So <clears throat> five ways to stop giving a fuck and start embodying your goddess energy. This is something that uh, I briefly talked about on Instagram and on Instagram. It's the, it's the post five shifts I made to not give a fuck and create the magical life I desire. And in this case, I just want to focus on five things that have, well, number one, helped me. And then I taught this to uh, my students and my various master classes and also these five points will help you stay on track when life happens, when time passes and the person who you distance yourself from or, or whatever the case may be, seems like they change, but it's really psyched. They're just seeing if you still have that boundary up. So these, these five ways, again, will help you to, I don't want to say have tunnel vision, but just help you stay the course. Okay. Let's get into it. One is to question everything. Start debunking shit. And that's actually the first uh, is the carousel post. Number one is start. I started debunking shit. So when I began my spiritual journey, well, I later learned it was a spiritual journey. But in the beginning, I was reading that were just helping me understand a lot that was going on in my life at the time. And what I learned was that a lot of things that were deemed evil or dirty was just ways to oppress the divine feminine and to do smear campaigns on pagan and other traditions, other cultures. So when I hear people talk about, and this is an example, I I just, this is an example of a conversation I've had and conversation I overheard so many times. And it's the the fatigue, the being tired of after working all day, you have to cook dinner or clean or you know, whatever it is, household duties as a sign, right? And some people would guilt trip people for hiring a cleaning service or guilt trip them if their house is messy. Um, excuse me. That person worked eight, 10, however many hours. Do you honestly think after dealing with people that someone is just like, oh, wow, I can't wait to go home and cook? No, no. Even if you love cooking, you, you, especially if you had to commute to work, you're just like, you're tired from commuting. You're tired from dealing with people. You ask your kid to throw the chicken out, you know, defrost the chicken. They didn't do it. Now you have to wait. There's so much that goes on. And so many times I've told people, you are missing the point. People get tired. Also, if they're paying for a cleaning service, that's most likely a small business. So they are supporting small businesses. People are doing their job. Right. So now it, it, it's that domino effect. You're supporting a small business owner. That small business owner now can pay their employees. OK, and it goes on and on and on. And then the employee can take their money and, you know, put it back in the economy or invest, whatever the case may be. But I'm not going to guilt trip someone because society says that no matter what, their house has to be in tip top shape and all this. Listen. If your house is a little messy, I am not going to clean it. 
<laughs> so I'm not going to say anything to you. If anything, I'll just tell you I'm not worried about it because I'm not. I'm not. I don't know what you're going through. You could have had a, a mental breakdown the other day. You could be just not in the mood. You could be overwhelmed. You could be going through something. I'm not about to judge you if you have a dish in a sink. <laughs> it's crazy. And the same applies to spirituality. You hear things like black magic. No, no, no. Things that are accepted now, but really it just got repurposed. Or I like to say in the words of Missy Elliott, you know, flip it and reverse it. Right. I talked about this on the podcast before honeymoon, how uh, people, they would get married on a full moon and from full moon to full moon, you were pardoned from your social responsibilities. So that was your honeymoon. And then you also given a jar of sweets or honey. So it's like have a sweet marriage and enjoy this honeymoon. But now, God forbid, if you say something like, oh, what a full moon and, you know, doing all that other stuff, it's like. No, that's not evil or sexuality. I tell people, wherever the most energy is going towards to oppress, that's where the strength lies. I can't believe that there are so many adults who are against people expressing their sexuality. It's just like, (laughs) you could be exploring yourself, enjoying yourself, enjoying people, if that's what you want to do, but instead Instead, you rather oppress a group of people and tell them because they look a certain way, that they're inferior, that they're dirty because they believe in self-pleasure and all these other things. That's how you, that's one of the ways that you get comfortable in your own skin and understand your needs and your wants physically. Like, (laughs) right? Think about that. What gets outlawed? When I learned about um, the history of tattoos and how uh, many tattoos have meanings and different cultures, you know, do it differently and things like that. I just thought to myself, wow, like the smear campaign was, I hate to say it was, was too good, too good. Imagine someone telling you your, your tattoos are unprofessional, your hair color is unprofessional, uh, the way you look is unprofessional, you just happen to be a curvy woman, but oh my God, your curves and what you're wearing is so distracting. What? You having pink hair does not make you less creditable. And I understand if you have a certain job and if you're doing undercover work, yeah, you're gonna stand out with pink hair, But the narrative really needs to change about what's professional and what's not professional. And it really start, it needs to go towards who's the best for the job and who works well with people. I've seen some really clean cut people be assholes (laughs) to the point where it's just like, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, that title you have is only effective when you're in the building. Like, I'm not saying that they're going to get beat up, but I'm just saying people let the title go to their head. And it's just like, did you ever stop to think that if someone sees you in a supermarket, they may want to have words with you? Like, it, Meanwhile, I've seen people who have tattoos be one of the, the nicest people on the planet. Now, I'm not saying all people with tattoos are nice. What I'm saying is there's stigma behind it that needs to be let go. Among other things, among with women, you know, you're never going to win, right? Your dress is too short. Your dress is too long. It's So the more I debunked things, the better my life got because it was living by someone else's standards that didn't make any sense. Some standards should exist, right? If it's a red light, stop. (laughs) Don't drive past a red light. You can cause an accident. That is a good standard to live by. That's a good law. that's, That's good. I get that. Don't break into someone's house. Yeah, you shouldn't be breaking into someone's home. But to want to oppress someone's culture or just because they're a female or something like that, no. Because what I found was that 
okay, first of all, there's nothing new age about new age. Like the old ways are ancient and they predate so many other religions. And there are other religions that just did a smear campaign, repurposed their holidays and took it, took it as their own, all of that. So once I learned that, it put a lot of things in perspective for me. And it helped me to sidestep from society's oppressive and obsolete lifestyle standards and create my own. So that that's one. Always question things. Um, always beg to differ. See what works for you. Ask yourself, is this an obsolete framework, idea, belief? I, st- I, I just still think about the, the work day. What, why, why, why are we working five days? Or why are some people working five days and off too? Oh, because when that was established, it was the wife was staying home so she can take care of the home needs. And when the guy came home, that's all he did. He came home and he ate dinner, <laughs> essentially. So he had to worry about cooking, cleaning, doing homework with the kids, you know, all those other things. He could mow the lawn on Saturday. Times are different. So start asking yourself, what's obsolete? What works for me? What needs to be debunked? A lot of things, a lot of sayings, a lot of uh, things that we do now are just repurpose of, repurposing of ancient ways. All right. Next has to do with self-worth and standards. I want you to think about your non-negotiables. This is something I talked about. Oh gosh, maybe like seven, eight years ago at this point. I, I remember thinking, because I, I was speaking at a conference and I thought, how can I help? It was an all women's conference. Like, how can I help these ladies with discerning what's acceptable and what's not for them? And I thought, ah, non negotiable. What are your non negotiables? And also, what are the things that you can accept or agree to disagree? And I say that because when I was in business school, the first day of class or one of the first days of class, we watched a simulation video and it was the the crash of a helicopter. And uh, the narrator asked you, you know, what would you take from the helicopter to survive until help comes? And it was like duct tape and all those other things. And so we broke out into groups and we discussed, oh, yeah, we definitely definitely need duct tape. Like no matter what, you almost always need duct tape. And then we, we said, oh, yeah, we need a pot and a lighter because we can melt the snow and, you know, we can use that for water, whatever. We were just, you know. At the end, the professor said that there, there really wasn't a right, quote unquote, right answer. It's about understanding when you're in a group. What are you willing to accept? What can you deal with? And a few other things, right? Because if you're in a helicopter crash, some things are a necessity, right? But uh, basically, it was just understanding what are the things that you could live with, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. So someone wanted, I think it was like a racket because they figured that they could duct tape their feet to the racket. I'm like, I don't think we need a racket, but whatever. Okay, so that's what I'm saying is there are going to be some things in your life that you won't necessarily agree with. And, um, and, and this comes also with a bit of discernment. There are some things that are just wrong and, and horrible. And it's just, no, like, that's what you believe. That's messed up. No. Okay, so I'm not talking about things that are harmful to people and stuff like that. What I'm saying is, uh, maybe your, your spouse loves baseball and you're just like, I can't do it, honey. You can go to all the baseball games you want with your friends. No, thank you. Not interested. You can live with it. It's not a deal breaker. Okay. So what are your non-negotiables and what are, uh, things that are not a deal breaker? Okay. So really think about that. That helped me. That helped me a lot. So understanding what are my non-negotiables helped me to frame my life because I, okay, so for example, one of my non-negotiables is that the people who I hang around 
need to be open-minded. And some people may think, well, who are you to tell people what they need to be? It's like, no, 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 no. I have a very diverse group of friends. You don't have to agree with every single thing that they're doing in their lives. But I can't be around someone who's going to disrespect someone because of some belief that's telling them, oh, they can't live life like this. Who are you to tell someone how they should live their life when no one's being harmed? If someone wants to live in Alaska with their Huskies, God bless. (laughs) If someone wants to be in a poly relationship and everyone's on the same page, go forth and do great things. I am not going to tell you how you should live your life. I'm not paying your bills. I am not raising your children. I am, I'm not doing anything. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I have no say so. Also, I don't want to have a say so. That's your decision. So that's what I'm saying. What are your non-negotiables of yourself and who you hang around? Because I, there are some things I will not tolerate. No, you can't hang around me if you're talking like that about certain things. I can have political conversations with my friends. I can have conversations just about anything, whatever comes up. And there's no emotionally charged, want to name call and no, and no, no, we respect people. We're inclusive. Okay. So next is playfulness. I had to remember to do this. No matter what, I'm myself. And there have been times where I wasn't myself 100% because I thought I had to be a certain way. But at the core, I was always there. Now, I, I had the volume turned up. And what I realized is that I'm someone who loves to have fun no matter where I'm at. I will dance. (laughs) I tell this story because (laughs) she is such a good sport. So at at a local Rite Aid where I I used to um, live, they they would play some really cool 80s music. And whenever I would go there with my grandmother or whomever, I would just dance a little bit. And I will always bump into the same (laughs) lady. who worked there and she would put the, the price tag on, you know, the two pays or what have you. <clears throat> and every single time I, I, I never saw her. So I don't know. She had to come up after we walked past a certain point in the aisle. And then I would back up doing a little two step. And I, all, I <laughs> consistently would light bump, lightly bump into her and I would say, Oh, I'm so sorry. And she just giggle. No harm, no foul. And then there are other times where I'm with my brother, we're in the car jamming or we're in a mall. And sometimes people would dance with us. We would look over in the car and they're like, yeah. Or <laughs> a lady one time danced with us when we were in H&M. That's what I love. It's just spreading that joy and happiness and playfulness, especially as adults. Because it's easy to forget. Because sometimes you want to grind, 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 grind. But the magic is when we play, when we have fun, when we nurture that part of ourselves, our inner child, our creativity, we flourish even more. You can't be so far deep in the grind that you forget about play because that only take you but so far. I know because I used to run on whatever's less than, than E, that's what I was running on when I first started my business. So it's not fun. <laughs> I don't recommend that for everyone. But the more I played, the more I focused on receiving, the more I focused on raising my vibration through playing, which is dancing, music, singing, the better things got. And also I stopped caring what I look like in public when I'm doing a little two-step dance, because guess what? Some people need to be reminded to just dance, to just be that it's okay if you want to do a little two-step because your song came on. It's okay to bob your head. It's okay to have fun and be happy again. It's okay to be expressive and creative. And so many times people look like, mm, when they, mm, no, 
forget that. Okay. You, you can be out in public and, you know, have, have your little, little dance session. All right. So that, that playfulness had also to do with putting myself first, making the commitment to myself that I'm going to pour into myself. I'm going to nurture myself. I'm not going to disrespect myself. I'm going to protect my energy. I'm going to protect my emotions. I'm going to be vulnerable around the right people. I'm going to establish and maintain boundaries. I don't care who doesn't like it. Because if you liked my boundaries, then guess what? You probably didn't need to experience those boundaries. And I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, but I also became more private with my life. Um, Next is mind prep. This is something I am stone cold serious about, like stone cold Steve Austin stunner serious about mind prepping. I started doing this, I don't even know how long ago. And and I know I taught, I either talked about this in my mastermind. I talk so many places now. I don't remember where I say these (laughs) things, but um, I started just listening to motivational videos in the morning. And then I later learned um, Tony Robbins said it was mind prepping or, or gearing your mind for the day, something like that. So I spent hours mind prepping, whether it's me while I'm washing my face, brushing my teeth, or I'm just laying down and listening to the beats and really just feeling that vibration. When you really take a few steps back and relax and listen to the beats of affirmations and those frequency beats, you'll feel yourself vibrating. And here's how I know it works. I was working on money affirmation. I I just had it playing over and over and over and over again. I started to get happy about paying bills. I was happy. I was happy to pay a bill. Uh, And then another one, I was like, you know what? Cool. Before, I used to be annoyed. I used to have these really cute checks that were Care Bears. And and it used to state, have a nice day. And I was like, no, I don't (laughs) know. I don't want you to have a nice day. What happened was that I I just felt like I needed to keep all my money to me because what if something happens, which is probably a past life issue, but I just always felt like I, I need to have this money here because what if I need to like go and, and I have to, you know, use this cash or whatever the case may be. I was just feeling that way. But then I realized I need to be at a certain frequency to be more in the flow of receiving money. So now when I pay a bill, I don't have uh, any type of negative or pullback emotion to it. I'm just like, oh, okay, thank you. Here you go. See you next month. (laughs) Some things are on auto pay, but I do not trust my cable company. People know what I'm talking about, especially people in Philly. You know what I'm talking about. The electric company, do I have them on auto pay? Yeah, the, yeah, nah, because I don't, I don't trust them. P- people know, people on the East Coast know what I'm talking about. I just, I need to see that statement. I want to itemize. I want to know what, what is that? What is that? But <laughs> all the things are on auto pay. But when I have to write a check, I'm, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I can afford this and still have money in the bank. I'm thankful for services rendered and I can afford it. I'm just thankful, thankful, thankful. So that mind prep helped my, my kind of, when it came to spending money. Um, It also helped with me just overall raising my vibration and, and getting my mind right. Especially when Being an entrepreneur, there are ups and downs, diagonal, you know, everything such as in life. And when I hear interviews of people and when I hear the, you know, I can, I must, all these other things just really gearing me up. It also makes me more conscious of the conversations that I'm having, the conversations that I'm not having, that I'm staying away from because it's, it's, it has no value. It's pointless. Okay. 
and it seeps down into my subconscious where things now feel even more believable. It's not just a vision. It's not just a feeling. It is a combination of things. It becomes me, you know, just that, that feeling that, yes, I am that frequency. I am aligned. And all those packages, those manifestation packages, oh, yeah, they're on express delivery. Expedite that shipment. Thank you. <laughs> and also, it helped me to be, it helped me to just be. I'm someone who I love to daydream. And I love to, whenever I get a vision about, I get little snippets of future me. Like I, I, I would get a snippet of me, you know, doing something. And then I want to, you know, dive into that. Like, oh, what would that, you know, how would that play out? And then sometimes I would get frustrated that I'm not there yet. And I had to pull myself back. It's just like, you can't spend too much time in the past and you can't spend too much time in the future. You have to be present. And once I remember to be present because of all that mind prepping, then I'm not frustrated. I'm not angry. I'm not annoyed because I'm where I'm supposed to be because I worked so hard in the past to get to where I'm at now. And as long as I keep working where I'm at now, I'm going to be that future Tia. But if I don't do the work, future Tia will fade away. All right. Next is I started asking myself, who am I doing this for? Who am I doing this for? When I was focused on getting accolades and things like that, yes, I, I love learning. I love expanding my mind and begging to differ and you know having those conversations. Just whatever the case may be. What if time travel did is this? What, if, what would that look like? Blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. When we start doing things for other people so much so that it starts to take from us, now we're going to have resentment, regret, and all the things that come with that. So if you are doing things for the family, for keeping a peace, for the job, but it's requiring too much of you, and the ROI is overwhelm, mental exhaustion, not being appreciated, feelings being invalidated. If that's your return on doing all that, that needs to end. And I know just from personal experience, there have been too many times where where I, and I don't want to say invested in people where I was just there for people time time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's just like, are you going to change the situation? You are literally the only person who could change the situation. I cannot be the emotional punching bag. I can't agree with you all the time. No, I'm not betraying you because I disagree. Did you stop to think that maybe what you're doing is not working? (laughs) Did you think about this? At some point in time, it's exhausting. You're, you're working hard at your job. You do a task because it's so urgent. And you're like, okay, like that's, that's a little bit extra, but I'll do it. And then it's like nothing. It's like, can I get appreciated for that? No. Okay. All right. Move along. And then it happens again, again, and again, and again. And then not that you're comparing, but you see someone else who hmm, maybe they're not doing as much as you, but then they get some accolade. You're just like, well, wait a goddamn minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Because sometimes the reward for extra for doing that extra work is just extra work. Crazy. Sometimes it works in the end where you get that appreciation, right? Everyone likes to be appreciated, and there's nothing wrong with receiving that when you go over and beyond. There's your job description, and then what tends to happen is over and beyond and people should be acknowledged for that. 
So really think about who are you doing this for? Your job should be working for you, just like you're working for the job. Your job should have some benefits that are pleasing for you. And if it's not, now's the time to start looking elsewhere, get your resume together, give yourself some time, save your money, and start applying elsewhere. Because it's an exchange, right? Like, like anything else, it's, it's an exchange. And if the scales are uneven for a long period of time, that's a problem. So to do a quick recap, there's so much more I can talk about, but these five things are truly important. Questioning everything, start debunking things, question, especially when something just feels off. Chances are it is. There are a lot of obsolete lifestyle standards still swirling around. It's time to change that. It's time to change how spirituality has been has been portrayed and and I I am seeing it come around and it is more on the forefront it's not like it was back in the day where you had to go in the back in the corner of the bookstore um but also with that there are there are other things but that's a conversation for another time all right self-worth what are your standards what are your non-negotiables and what are the things that you can live with okay Your non-negotiables are going to be crucial because they will align with your standards. And this is also about you respecting yourself because the more you respect yourself, the less chance someone has to disrespect you because there's always going to be someone who don't know you or try to try you, whatever the case may be. But as long as you know who you are and you you are in control of your emotions, They can never get the best of you. All right, playfulness, you need to have fun. I mean, earth is already a harsh place to live, okay? It is. Enjoy the moments, those playful moments, those candid moments. Enjoy the sunset. Enjoy the beach. Enjoy the morning sunrise. I guess that's redundant. Sun rises in the morning, but you get what I'm saying. Enjoy that slow sip of coffee, the aroma. Okay. Go jump in a puddle. All right. Go get lost somewhere. Okay. Lost where you can get back, you know, like just go walk around and into some store that you haven't been in. That's what I mean by getting lost. Okay. I want you to go back home safely. All right. Just start doing that. Take a dance class, get, get moving, play some fun, upbeat music while you're cooking. Okay. Start incorporating play with what you're doing. Mind prep. Like I said, I, I spend hours mind prepping. I love it. Absolutely love it. It gets me right in the mornings and it sets the tone for the rest of my day. I don't like talking to certain people in the morning. It's like, no. I am mind prepping. I will not answer my phone. <laughs> Some people, you know, they call me in the morning. Hey, what are you doing? I need to mind prep first. I need to get my mind right. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and who am I doing this for? If I'm not doing this for me, that's a problem. And it may sound selfish. But we have to put ourselves first if we want to show up for the people who we love. Okay, so if you have children, you have to make sure that you are up to par with yourself, that you're pouring into yourself so you can be there for them. So you can be there for your spouse. So you can be there for your, your bestie and your close friends and all that. Because if you're drained and overwhelmed, the children are going to pick up on that. I just still can't believe how people discount what children see, hear, and feel. It's just like, they're, they're like sponges. Seriously, do you honestly think that you are kidding a child? It, like, have you heard a child speak like, oh, my mommy doesn't like my daddy. You don't have to say anything. They know. I give the example of my nieces. <laughs> when I, I told her, uh, one of them, they were just, uh, 
in in one of the rooms with me and she was on the floor playing with her Barbie. And I said, uh, honey, I'm going to, I'm going to write. And I, I told this story in a podcast before. It's like, oh, I'm going to write a little bit while I was going to type. And uh, I like to tell them what I'm going to do. So they know where I'm at, what I'm doing, you know, in case they need anything. And also just to include them. And she stopped and she looked around. She said, where's your coffee? Like she already knew that I drink my coffee when I'm typing and things like that. They pick up on so much and yet people still discount children. I don't get it. So when you pour into yourself, the kids will see that. I, when I gave that example of me dancing in Rite Aid, I danced with my nieces at a red light. I throw her around. The other one was too young at the time. But when I would take out the older one, it's a real light. I'll just twirl her around. And I said, all right, here goes the curb. Let's jump off. And we'll jump off the curb because, one, it's fun. Two, well, her mom does a great job at, with this anyway. But to keep that creativity and that, that childhood essence intact for as long as possible. Do you have to jump in every puddle? No, of course not. I get that. But I just... I just feel a, a little sad when I see people just yank their child. Don't get over here. And it's just like, you didn't have to yank the child. But I mean, maybe you could say, oh, no, no, honey, not that puddle is too big. We'll find a smaller puddle for you to jump in. Because over time, school and society will beat the creativity out of the child. I don't, mm, that, that's, that's a bit harsh to say. I don't want to say beat out of a child, but they will slowly extract being creative and being independent out of a child over the years. So tap into the inner child and focus on being playful. That's going to be part of the magic that fuels you. All right. And then, you know, remember who, who, who you're just doing this for. Oh, I actually just combined in playfulness and who you're doing this for. <laughs> just realized that. See, that's what happens when I get in the zone and I don't look at my notes, but you get what I'm saying. Focus on who are you doing this for? Focus on not just your why, but look at it also as the future you, as, as I was mentioning earlier, because that's what's going to keep you on track and not worry about what he she they are saying it's just like you're not going to understand you're just not and for those who do understand they're on that same boat the same boat they get it they may not fully get you but they get it okay and I have a bonus one for you I had to remind myself who the fuck I am I I I had to I encourage people to do a life resume and I'm going to be talking more about that and basically it's just just like when you create a resume for your job start listing all your accomplishments in life in life whatever goal you set out list that anything you ever received that that just made you feel immensely grateful and just amazing if Let's say your your stepchild wanted to take your last name. They wanted you to adopt them. That's like, that's an achievement. You know, whatever it is, start reminding yourself who the fuck you are. You are resourceful. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are capable. You are strong. You are magical. There are so many great things about you. You're talented and you're creative. And so, gosh, there have been so many times where I talk to people and they say things like, oh, I'm not creative. There's nothing you know, special about me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You just haven't found it yet or you haven't turned the value up in that area of your life. I guarantee you, you are beautiful, special, unique. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care. All right? Start reminding yourself of what you're capable of, the grit that you have inside of you. And I want you to be your own cheerleader. I'm, I'm cheerleading for you. I want you to be successful. I want you to thrive. I want you to expand. I want you to create that magical life you desire. And I, and I, I encourage you to look in the mirror and tell yourself who the fuck you are. All right? You, you are that fill in the blank. 
I'm that goddess. I'm that enchantress. I'm that person. I want you to always be you, no matter where you are. No matter where you are, stay true to yourself. And don't get caught up on someone else's standards. Don't get caught up in someone else's life check marks, checkpoints. And I say checkpoints because you can you can tell many on, on many occasions when people do things is to check it off their list in life. I've I've known people who got in married only because all the other friends got married. I can't tell you if that's a happy marriage or not. I cannot. I, I don't I don't keep touch with them. But when when I first learned it, I was just like, that's that's really messed up. You should not want to do something because everyone else is doing it. That is a, a huge commitment. And the last thing you want is to, well, first of all, not be truthful with the person who you're marrying. And also you're not being honest with yourself. If you're looking for love, there are so many ways to go about it. But to force that and to marry someone because everyone else around you is married, you're setting yourself up. Now, could it work? There's always, you know, I don't know the the chances, the probability, but yeah. It could work. They can grow to love each other. But why put yourself in that position? Why get the home with the five bedrooms and a two-car garage when you don't want to maintain that home? You don't even like it. You'd rather be in a condo and let maintenance deal with everything. You don't want to shovel when it snows. You don't want to mow the grass. Or maybe you do want that home. And you'll pay someone to mow the grass, but you're doing it because you want it, not because someone said, oh, you're in this, this little home, mind your damn business. Since you you care so much, and I told a person this years ago, when um, <laughs> someone told me, you need to get responsibility, and I said, well, buy me a car. So this person like, you don't have a car? Why? The job I, I was at, they're paying me to come to work. They have an agreement with transportation and we have our, our, um, back then it was, it was like a, um, a voucher and you can, you get trans pass or whatever. So I'm just like, my traveling expense is zero, but since you care, buy me a car, pay for the gas, pay for the maintenance, pay for the insurance. What? I'm not doing that. That was the person's response. Okay. Then. Okay. Then. Okay. Then. So once again, I will not do something because someone else wants me to do it if it's not for me at that time. And now if that person said, hey, you know, I worry about your safety, you know, then maybe I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you know, okay. But it's how people say things. Like my pop pop used to say is not what they say is how they say it. And like responsibilities, it depends on what you're looking at, right? There are some baseline responsibilities across the board, right? Take care of your children. Take care of yourself. Right? So you have to understand what's for you. This is why I talked about needs and wants. What are your needs and wants? Because if you're not careful, you're going to start giving fucks about what other people say so this is how you start to and this is how I extended my learning with uh, embodying my goddess energy learning what's right for me at a given time now I have my driver's license right I can rent a car if I want to Or get a car. I mean, you know, it it depends, right? But I got it when it was right for me. So think about that. 
the more I start understanding these things, the more I was able to learn about myself and do things on my timeline. Now, some things do need to be sped up. Sometimes we drag our feet with certain things. And that's why we surround ourselves with certain people, certain caliber of people who challenge us. Because I am not above being checked. There are very few people as an exclusive list <laughs> of people who can yell at me. But I mentioned this before, one of my good friends, uh, this was during my second book. I was like, oh, I had writer's block. And he said, hey, get that shit done. And I said, you know what? You're right. And I'm going to make that a chapter in my book. And it's a chapter in my book. And that friend is now family. And he has challenged me in so many ways over the years. I'm grateful. Because in the words of Tiger Woods, when uh, an interviewer asked him, why do you have a coach? You're the best golfer. He said, because I can't see my own swing. So I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the time when we need, you know, that push, that challenge. That's, that's what our, our good, good friends and our good, good support system is for. Other than that, be careful. Be careful of what people are telling you because they will make you feel less than inadequate and feel like you need to dress a certain way, have a certain car, have a certain house, live life a certain way. Meanwhile, you're miserable. Also where I live and by the time I come home, it is hard to find parking. Hard, terrible, almost an hour sometimes. My friends would tell me, imagine working eight, nine, 10, however many hours, then you got to spend another hour in traffic, another hour finding parking. Then you got to come home and cook. (laughs) Guess what? You're going to order out. You're not going to be cooking every night. Okay. So, and then also at one point I was going for my master's degree. So it's just like, again, doing what's right for me. Some people may think that's ridiculous. You don't need your master's degree. Don't worry about it. I'm on my own course. I have certain things that I want to do. So this is how, these are some of the ways I've embodied my goddess energy because goddesses know what they want. And if it's a time where they don't want, that's when they go on that journey of discovery. They don't just take what people tell them. And they are constantly shedding, you know, what doesn't work, right? This is why when we work with goddesses, we we know, okay, here are their symbols and things like that. That's what's associated with them. So what's associated with you? These are some heavy things to think about, but to get to the point, where you are not entertaining the quote-unquote advice, constructive criticism from people who really aren't there to add value to your life. I mean, like, you could just, getting to that point of not listening to that is beautiful. Getting to the point of not worrying about what someone's going to think because you got your ear pierced or something like that, it's freedom. It's freedom to not have to worry about that. And of course, you're going to care about what the people think about you, who you truly, you know, you have feelings for, you know, you care about them, they're your loved ones, but that's not going to override what you have to do. That's not going to override your purpose and your vision. They're going to support you even if they, even if they don't understand it. Okay, that's different than trying to knock you down and make you feel like you should be doing something other than. Okay, so this has been so beautiful. I feel even relieved talking about this because embodying this goddess energy for me has been dived into framework. And that's why my courses, um, my masterminds, the things that I do are heavily focused on coursework. Not that I don't mind spell work and things like that. I think it's beautiful. But for me and the school of Tia, <laughs> if you will, we work, with, we, we work on a lot of framework, boundaries, confidence, what's right for you, your needs, wants, desires, pleasures, 
all of that. Because once you're able to hone in on that, embodying who you want to be, creating that environment that's for you, mind mind prepping, getting your mind right so you can dissolve those limiting beliefs, imagine how much more your magic will be, how much more powerful and potent your magic will be when you go to cast that spell, when you do that ritual, when you speak up for yourself, when you tell the universe what you want, when you're working with goddesses and other divine beings, when you, you are working with your higher self, when you're working on your chakras, imagine all the other power that is waiting for you when you stop giving a fuck what people have to say about you and your life, your lifestyle, that's not bothering anyone. Okay. Uh, I am sending you so much love, lots of blessings. You know, I'm rooting for you. Sign up for activating your goddess masterclass. Woo woo. So many great things coming your way. All right. Be kind to yourself, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in, Magical One. Let's keep in touch. Join the VIP email list by going to tmariejohnson.com. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I'm rooting for you. And remember to be kind to yourself. Until next time.